What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Fleet Brothers channel. On the last video, I showed you guys how I take photos of all of my Turo cars for all of my Turo listings. So today I'm gonna be showing you guys how I go ahead and edit those photos before they go up onto the Turo platform. So as you can see here, I like to edit all of my photos in Adobe Lightroom. That seems to be the quickest and easiest way for me to edit a bulk amount of photos like I do for, for cars. So I'm gonna kind of walk you guys through step by step how I edit these photos. To the best of my knowledge, I'm by no means professional photographer, but I do dabble enough to take good car photos. One thing to note is that I have the same settings on my camera for all of these photos when I was taking them. So that makes it really easy on me when I'm going ahead and applying the same edit to multiple photos so that I don't have to go one photo at a time every single one with different settings to make it look normal. I just figure out what works on one photo and then I can copy and paste those settings onto multiple. First step that I go through is I sift through these photos to find out which ones I want to keep. And then on any one that I like and I wanna keep, I'm gonna go ahead and click the P button on my keyboard. The P is for the word pick. So I'm flagging it as a pick when I click P. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through all these photos and anything that I like or even think could possibly make it onto my Turo listing, I'm gonna go ahead and click P on that photo. You'll notice that I don't flag multiple photos with similar, basically the same shot twice. I'm just gonna pick one of those so that I don't have to edit even more photos for no reason. So I'm just gonna go through and figure out which ones I wanna pick first off. All right, and now that I've gotten through all of these photos and picked the ones that I want to keep and edit, all I'm gonna have to do here is click here and go to flag. And you'll notice that only my flag photos come up. So I just whittled this down to only 35 photos that I have to actually go through and edit now. So it makes my life a whole lot easier. So I just go right back to the start. I'm gonna go ahead and apply a filter on this first one. And then once I have that, I can copy and paste it to the rest of them and apply some minor adjustments as I see fit. But what I like to do when I'm doing a filter is honestly, I just go down and move each one of these toggles until I like what it looks like. Sometimes I start at one extreme and then move over to a point that I like and uh, feel comfortable with. So I'll go through all of these settings and, and see how they turn out. And so as I'm going through this, one of the reasons that I like to bring the settings to an extreme and then go back down is because I really start to understand what that setting actually does for the photo. So as we can see here, if I'm playing with the shadows, I can get an understanding of what that really does for the photo. So if I'm looking for something after I've applied all of these filters, I can go back and adjust accordingly, knowing what each one actually does to the photo. All right, now that I have this at a point where I like it, one thing that I do enjoy doing is going here where I can compare the before and after so that I can really understand what the effect has done to the photo. So as you can see, we brightened it up a little bit more, the colors pop, you can see the white of the car a little bit more. So I'm really liking the effect that we have. All right, and the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit Command C and that way I'm gonna be able to copy all of the settings that we just added to this picture. And then once I move on to the next photo, all I have to do is simply hit um, Command V. And all of those effects will um, go onto this photo as well. So a lot of times I don't even have to make much of an adjustment at all. Uh, for this one, I do kind of want the clouds to appear a bit more. So I'm gonna to try to make a, a couple of adjustments. All 
And then again, go here, copy and paste. And I'm just gonna do this on all the exterior photos, making minor adjustments along the way until I'm happy with all those. And then for interior shots, since the lighting is completely different as you're inside the car, you're gonna just repeat that process over again. So let's start with these exterior shots. You'll see here that I'm actually keeping multiple of the same angle. I typically don't do this, but I'm literally just keeping them because in my previous video, I'm showing examples of how I take photos at, you know, closer up and further away and higher up and lower down angles. So that's the only reason I'm doing that. Otherwise I typically don't. All right, now that I've gotten through all the exterior photos, I'm gonna go back through on any of these shots and see if I wanna crop it in any way. So something to pay attention to is, for example, the background is kind of slanted. So you're kind of looking at the, uh, the city behind the photo. So for example, in this picture, this is pretty straight and the background maybe a little bit tilted, but otherwise it's, it's pretty good. But if your background has a bit of a tilt, so if it's at like an angle one way or another, then you're gonna wanna go into, uh, into here and just adjust the angle of your background. And it's pretty cool. You can even take this drawing tool and draw where your line should be. So if I use just the car's angle, it'll adjust it slightly like that. Um, and typically you wanna use something in the background but I'm gonna go ahead and apply that. And then of course on all of my more detailed shots where I'm trying to highlight something like a logo, I wanna try to be utilizing the rule of thirds. So if we go to this shot where I'm trying to just take a photo of this Overland logo on the Jeep, I can go here and then looking at the grid that comes up on the photo, we're gonna wanna crop it so that this logo, and I did a pretty decent job while taking the photo to be mindful of this, but I wanna make it even more apparent with the rule of thirds and then kind of crop it in a little bit so that that logo is just up there in that top third of the photo. All right, now as I'm moving to my interior photos, like I said earlier, these are a bit more difficult in terms of the, uh, the lighting. So I'm gonna go ahead and recreate a filter, but for the inside and use that filter over and over on the inside, but it's probably gonna require a lot more adjustments just because as you're taking different photos within the car, there's shadows and, and the lighting is different. So it's the same process. However, it's a little bit more adjusting as you know, that lighting changes. And so here's a good example of where the background is a bit slanted. So I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a line kind of across this tree line, I guess. And, um, and then I can go ahead and just click done. And then something I do whenever I'm cropping these is I make sure to retain the, uh, the aspect ratio. So if you look here, I have it locked so that I can't go this way and make it, you know, 
um, very slim and I can't go to the right and make it really narrow. I wanna make sure that I'm retaining that same aspect ratio for all the photos so that when I upload it, it doesn't you know, come out with some weird mismatching photo aspect ratios. All right, and so there you have it. That's how I edit all the photos for my Turo listing. The last step is you're just gonna go and select all the photos, and you can do that by holding shift and then selecting the last photo in the album, and then you're gonna go up to file and export. So once you do that, you'll be able to export all of your photos straight to wherever you would like. So if you wanna see the final product, Check in the description for a link to uh, those photos and even the Turo listing for this specific car. And I will see you in the next one. Peace.